So, happy Christ the King Sunday. I know that that word king is sometimes unusual in our modern context because we think of somebody lording over other people. And I'm not sure that's the best image for Jesus. Because the one thing we know about who God is and the very character and the nature of God is that while Jesus is Lord over all things, which by the way in the ancient world king was about the best word they had to explain the magnitude of the reign of Christ. Okay, But in that reign Jesus and God never lord over us but always invite us into that which God is about. I mean, one of the main mantras here at Cornerstone is love a story bigger than yourself. So that story, which is a part of God's good and beautiful creation, which we all find ourselves wrapped up in, is under the reign of Christ, who invites us into that story, which at its center is love. It's all about love. It's all about building and growing relationships of love that find depth and sustenance and sustainability and provide us with comfort we, where we can find our hearts in union, united with the very heart of God, which God's heart desires the liberation and the freedom and the equity of all people. I mean, at God's heart is the desire that all may know that they are loved that all are celebrated, that all are children of God, that all have enormous gifts. And so we're wrapped up into that which is God. Praise be to God. Amen? Amen. And so on Christ the King Sunday, we're not saying God is lording over us. We're saying that God's incredible love is inviting us into something deeper. And as we step into the depth of that love, our desire in turn through the power of the Holy Spirit is to turn outside of this place, go out the doors into the world, and share that love with everybody else. To be good news ourselves, to let everybody know of the good news we know in Christ, and in turn let them experience that love for themselves in a way that brings healing and wholeness and peace and liberation and life, not just for us as individuals, but for all. Praise be to God. Amen? You see, when we say Jesus Christ is Lord, when we say Christ is King, what we mean is that God is Lord over it all. That we're not uh, isolating ourselves. We don't have little spheres of sovereignty where Jesus is only Lord over some parts of our lives and and other parts not so much. Um, You know what I mean, right? Yeah? I mean, Jesus is Lord over you and your family. And Jesus is Lord even when you get up on the wrong side of the bed or you haven't had your coffee yet. Jesus is Lord in the way that we speak to those closest to us and our neighbors and our friends. Jesus is Lord over your workplace and the place that you make a living. Jesus is Lord at the water cooler. Jesus is Lord in the midst of the conversations that occur around the water cooler. Jesus is Lord of your finances. Do you know that? Yeah, Leone's the only one who said it out loud, just so you know. (laughs) Jesus is Lord over your finances. Because everything that we have and everything we're about, which we've already celebrated in the service so far today, is a gift. And for those of us who know this tremendous love that comes from God, where we find our joy is in the depths of the gratitude that we have to offer in turn. In other words, when we step into this relationship with God and we know God's love, well, it should transform us in such a way that we desire that others might know that as well. That what we have received from God in turn we share and we give for the sake of others. A joyful heart is a heart full of gratitude. It's able to move us beyond ourselves. When we say Jesus Christ is Lord and Christ is King, what we're saying is that Jesus is over everything, everything. Praise be to God. Which makes it appropriate on this Sunday in which we're talking about stewardship and giving that we acknowledge that, yes, Jesus is even Lord over our finances and has invited us into this story in which we in turn give because we desire the best for others. As a matter of fact, when Leslie and I discern our giving to the church, Leslie's right here, she's my significant other, 
<laughs> All right. When we discern that, we don't think about what we are getting out of it. In other words, we don't sit down around the table and say, oh, you know what? They did away with that Bible study I was in last month. I don't think I'm going to give as much this year. Do you all do that? No? No? Well, we, 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 oh, man, that sermon last week was terrible. I'm not sure if I'm going to give any more. I mean, do you all think that way? No? No? I mean, we don't think about what we're getting out of it. When we discern our giving to the church, what we're thinking about is how our contribution is going to be a blessing not for us, but for every one of you. For you. And you in turn should be thinking the same way. It, it's at its core this, this idea of mutual respect, right? That we desire the best for the others even over ourselves. That, that's the message that comes through the gospel time and time again. And Jesus reminds us in the gospel that, you know, where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. And if your heart is wrapped up in stuff or things or possessions or money, guess what? Yeah, that's where you want your heart to be. But if your heart is a heart of generosity, of gratitude and thankfulness and giving, you in turn become a reflection of that. Your heart becomes something beautiful as a gift to the world. Amen? Gosh, Cornerstone, you've heard it a million times over the past several weeks. You know this. This is a beautiful place. that We have a special gift to share with the community. Um, we are so thankful to be in this place. We're so thankful that our young people, our children, and our youth are being raised in a community where they can know God and know God fully as they are created in the image of God. Amen? That we have work to do in our community. There, I literally, when Leslie was sitting up there, I thought of Horton who has a, here's a who, right? Horton, here's a who, Dr. Seuss, right? Talks about that little dust mite, right, that's screaming out, we're here, we're here, we're here. Horton's the only one with ears big enough to be able to hear the little thing crying out. You all know the story, right? Do I don't need to reiterate it for you again? Okay, well, anyways, I'm thinking, you know, this community needs to know we're here. They need to know we're here. And so we need to share that good news. We need to tell everybody about it. But we also need to contribute towards the work that God has called us here at Cornerstone. Amen. So I just want to take a moment because I know that each and every one of us have been impacted by somebody or a group of people who made a difference in our lives, who taught us what it meant to be generous. And so I just want you to take a moment and think of that person or people or group that taught you or demonstrated, modeled for you generosity. Think of that person. Who was it? And what set them apart in the way that they lived their life in the midst of the world that made a difference in your life? You have that person? Okay, without getting too close to somebody, I want you just to turn around to somebody in your area, and I want you to just take a minute or a couple minutes just to share with a group of four or five people, socially distanced, who that person is, okay? And maybe just a brief little description as to why that person made the difference. So go ahead, turn around to people around you. You might have to shout a little bit, but who was that person? I want you to name that person to the group of people you're with. So what I've noticed in my life, and I don't know whether you resonate with this as well, but I, I would guess that you do. Those people who made it the biggest impacts in your life, that have, have spoken to the depth of your heart, are those persons in your life who are enormously generous. Um, and I'm not just talking financially, I'm talking about generous in every way. In the way they give their time, in the way they listen carefully to you, in the way that they also have contributed to your life or even contributed to the community that you're a part of. Um, because it's all a gift. And in turn, we all share and we allow ourselves to be gifts for others. Um, you know, when Jesus talks about the seed falling to the ground and dying in order to be reborn, a lot of times we have to 
We have to die to those old self-centered models that the world has formed us in, to, for, telling us that it's all about us. And we need to be reminded time and time again through the gentle words of the one who is the Lord of all things, the king of the universe, that it's not all about us, it's all about the way we participate in this work together. We are in this work of ministry together, together. Now, I had three other components I was going to share in the sermon, but we could talk about that later, another time. I think it's just a good place for us to leave right now to encourage everybody to prayerfully discern their giving for 2022, to think about how we're going to give of ourselves for others as a community that we call Cornerstone, and as a beacon, an outpost of the kingdom here and now in Collier County. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen.